Welcome to the Cosmic Shambles Network. In this series of videos, we are here at Bordeaux in France to join ESA's 72nd parabolic flight campaign. And that takes place inside this aircraft and allows researchers to study what happens in zero gravity. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at what light does or what you can learn from light as it passes through a plume of dust or particles. So we know that we can get information from light when we see an object, light bounces off it, comes straight into our eyes, we see an edge, we know there's an object there. But it's not the only way we get information from light. It's also possible that if you've got a plume of dust or particles and light passes through them, that the, the way light is bounced around on the inside leaves a fingerprint on the light that carries on through or gets bounced off to the side. And so you could, each of the individual bits is too small to see itself. But when there's so many of them together, you can detect a huge amount of detail about what's going on in there using that light signature. And you can use that for all kinds of things. There's studi studies of volcanic ash plumes, for example, or tiny aerosol particles in the atmosphere or the atmosphere of our planet, or of other planets, or of interplanetary matter, what's happening out in the solar system where there's very diffuse plumes of dust. The idea is that you can get information from this signature, and there is an experiment just over there where they're watching this happen. This dust is composed of irregular particles. Mm -hmm. And we want to reproduce clouds of particles. Mm -hmm. At ground, it's very difficult, because if I take some particle, <laughs> and disease and the particles fall down very quickly. Yeah. So it's not possible to study them. So the interesting thing here is that when, when we look with our eyes yeah. and we see an object and we see all these details, we see the edge of the object yes. and we think that is what light can tell us. Yeah. But actually what you're doing is saying that even for a particle that's too small to see, yes. when light passes through it, it changes the light. Yes. The and you can, that's what you can measure. Yes, the light changes with the angle of observation. It is the same also in very old uh, cinemas, you know. <laughs> if you look behind you, you can see all the dust. Oh, yes, in the light. In the light. It's yeah. totally the same. We study this. And it's interesting because you can learn so much information from that. Yes, we can have information on the size, of mm -hmm. course, but also some indication of the composition. Mm -hmm. It's, of course, less accurate than spectroscopy. Mm -hmm. But we can have information so, on the nature and also on the porosity. Mm -hmm. We can say, it is, oh, it is a compact particle, like sand particles, or it is a fluffy particle, right. high porosity particle, last most of the particle in comets. And it's such a useful technique because light is traveling through the universe, and it's yeah. traveling through Earth, and there's always light coming from somewhere. And, and the, the concept here is that if it passes through a plume of... So one particle is not enough. It needs no, to be we need, yes, a it's connection. A, we need a cloud of particles because yeah. the light of one particle is too weak. Yeah. And also the particle can have an orientation. We want yeah. to have a random of orientation. So we consider at least tens of hundreds of particles during yeah. our experiment. But sometimes in space it would be, of course, large amount of particles. Uh, maybe 2010, there was the Icelandic volcano. Yes, of course. Yes, the famous and, one. <laughs> yeah, and there was there was a lot of debate about that volcano yes. because the air, the the regulator said the airlines must not fly, yeah. and the airlines said, well, you don't know, you don't know what's yeah. in that cloud, and that was really interesting. That was yes. you need these tools. Yes, right? at this time, our small instrument was not ready. In right. fact, we start <laughs> to build this instrument just after the Icelandic uh, volcanic eruption. Right. So now, for the future, we are ready. <laughs> I mean, we know if there is um, a potential presence of aerosols, mm -hmm. volcanic aerosols, we can launch a small balloon mm -hmm. to cross the layer of the atmosphere to mm -hmm. see if there is or not the famous uh, volcanic aerosols. And the idea here is that some, for, for jet engines, yes. some things are damaging, some, some yes, particles are more damaging than yes, others. Of course. So if you have a simple way of saying it's this type of particle or yeah. this type of particle, yeah. Then the good decisions uh, yes, get made. Yes, it was not the case uh, 10 years yeah. ago, so right. they make a very strong decision without real measurements. Right. So now we are ready to, to do this. The next volcano, yes, you're going to be there. Yes, we are ready. But at present, there is some small volcanic aerosols over Europe. Oh, really? It came from the Recoque eruption. It's a yeah. volcano that made eruption in last June. Mm -hmm. It's between Russia and Japan. Yeah. It was not... Um, solid aerosols, mm -hmm. mainly uh, coming from SO2, mm -hmm. gaseous SO2 uh, air, um, injection of this yeah. molecule, which now transform into liquid particles. Mm -hmm. But these aerosols are 
still over, over the mid latitude, and we make uh, a flight every two or three weeks mm -hmm. to study these aerosols. Yeah. And they remain at present at an altitude of 16 kilometers in the atmosphere. And they're still, because that, that's six months later, six, these six tiny months later. particles yeah. are it's still a, there. It's a big surprise that such aerosol remains so long yeah. at more or less a constant altitude. You can use this method to measure all sorts of particles as long as you've got a cloud of them, even if that cloud is really spread out. And it applies to pollution and desert dust, sea spray, fog, the dust floating around between galaxies and plenty more. These photos came from the North Pole, where the air is super clean, but even here you can find particles using Jean-Baptiste technique. And it's not just about detecting particles, you can also get some information about what they are. The trick is in reading the signature that they imprint on passing light, and that depends on the particle size, its shape, and whether it's fluffy and porous or solid. Liquid droplets are relatively easy because they're nice and round, but solid particles can be all sorts of complicated shapes, and that makes it much harder to predict the signature from theory alone. And particles in space or in atmosphere have the same optical properties. It's always right. the same physics. But the problem is that we have only irregular particles, and there is no universal rules, universal physical law for the light scattered by irregular particles. So we, make, we need to make a database with a lot of measurements. Mm -hmm. And because now we have this database, mm -hmm. we have uh, produced a small aerosol counter that can be used under balloon in Earth's atmosphere. Which I have seen fly yes. because and it came with me yes. to the Arctic last year. And this year. instrument is <laughs> specially dedicated to the detection of solid particles. Right. And it was really calibrated for this kind of particles. So we have done this small aerosol counter because we have started some measurements for irregular particles 25 years ago in the microgravity condition. I first met a LOAC in 2018. LOAC stands for Light Optical Aerosol Counter, and this is a device that can make these scattering measurements out in the wild. My colleagues Paul Zieger and Matt Salter brought it along to the North Pole expedition that I was part of. They wanted to measure particles directly in the air and the clouds above our ice flow. So the LOAC was suspended from a huge helium-filled balloon and then got to ride up directly into the region of the sky that mattered. This is really important stuff because clouds need some tiny particles in order to form. But up here at the North Pole, we still don't know very much about which particles matter most and where they come from. To make use of the data captured out in remote environments like this, you need to match it up with measurements from known particles in the lab. And that's what Jean-Baptiste is doing on the parabolic flight campaign. So the useful thing here is that once you know the signature, if you know that this particles like this, they do a certain thing to light, yes. and particles like this, yes. they do totally, something yeah, else, totally, totally, then you're collecting yes. those signatures. Yes. And that's what you're doing on the plane here. Yes, but of course we do it in a very small uh, volume. Mm -hmm. We put several hundred or several thousand of particles mm -hmm. And then we are waiting for the levitation of the particles. So I love this, because this is exactly the sort of behaviour that physicists can study theoretically, but you would never see it apart from here. Look at all of this here, tiny little grains. Imagine this being a place around a planet where little grains are bumping into each other, and you can imagine what it's like so you can see it here. Make a small shock on the vial to start the levitation. And Something is very funny. In fact, we don't like very good uh, microgravity condition. Right. We need a little motion <laughs> yeah. to ensure to have a random orientation. Right. Yeah. So we need, in fact, we need at the beginning of the parabola some small vibration, yeah. then very good parabola, yeah. and very good uh, microgravity condition in parabola. Yeah. And it is why our experiment is specially designed for the plane. Yes. Because there is some small variation of the microgravity yeah. condition. So what, so what it lets you do is to, to shake up the particles and then they're spread out just yes. like they would be. And you can use it, so there's things like volcanic dust and interplanetary dust yes. and then maybe dust on other planets yes. and then tiny aerosols on Earth. So any type of dust At, uh, yeah. anywhere totally you can right. use this. In particular, we have conducted a few years ago um, extensive studies on aerosols in Titan atmosphere. Tolins is a kind of aerosols, mm -hmm. more or less yellow or orange, brown in color, 
that can be produced in electric dis discharge mm -hmm. and in condition with a lot of uh, nitrogen, like in Titan atmosphere. Yeah. And we have made a lot of study to better understand how this aerosol can be, I mean the size, the mean size of the particles, mm -hmm. how they can be agglomerated and in which condition they have been produced. You have a library. You have a library of all the different types of yes. How many? How many have you measured? That's a good question. <laughs> yes, several hundreds. So you, so you can just match lots yeah. of things. You've just got this. And how many times have you been on this plane? Uh, it's, uh, oh, it's a good question again. <laughs> I think we have done uh, 60 and one campaign. Wow. So you, so you didn't go up today, but you don't mind. You've been no, there. Done I have that. Means, I've uh, <laughs> done so many parabolas, so now I'm very happy that some, some else. of my colleagues can, <laughs> can fly instead of me. It's slightly <laughs> decreasing, of course. So now you can still be interested in the science yes. without having yes. to yes. deal with the plane. Um, great. That's brilliant. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you very much. Great to talk to you. Thank you for watching. If you've liked the video, do go to YouTube and like it on there. We'd love you if you did that. And also keep an eye on cosmicshambles.com because there's all kinds of information there about the other stuff we get up to. So that's podcast videos like this. There's a blog network. We're doing lots of live events. There's all kinds of stuff going on. So do go to cosmicshambles.com to keep an eye on all of that. And of course, we owe an enormous debt of gratitude to ESA, to Novaspas, and especially to our Patreon supporters because that's what enables us to come here and share all this with you. And if you'd like to be part of that sharing, do please go to Patreon and do your bit.